Okay, so you're pretty familiar with the concept of integration by now, and what we're going to do here, instead of doing integration by hand or by use substitution, uh, methods you may or may not already know about, we're going to do an estimate of an integral value by using what's called RAM, or better yet, a rectangular approximation method. So RAM, rectangular approximation method. And the three methods we're going to focus on is an LRAM, RAM, and MRAM. L standing for left, R standing for right, and M standing for midpoint. When you get these types of problems, they're almost always going to be associated with a data table. So this data table doesn't have any meaning to any real uh, world phenomenon, but we're going to go ahead and use it. And so what you need to imagine is this data table turned into a graph. So if I were to just graph it by the data points they gave us, it would look like that. And we could connect the dots and we would get this very jagged piecewise function. Um, but for the purposes of our learning, I've taken those same data points and I've turned them into a smoother graph. I just kind of had to take a guess at what would be happening between, say, 2 and 5, between 6 and 10. And so I just did an estimate. It doesn't matter if I was totally accurate between those points, and you don't even have to do that. But what we're going to do is compute the area trapped between this function and the x-axis, because that's what an integral is. But Instead of doing it precisely, we're going to estimate it by drawing rectangles. And here's what I mean by that. So maybe for this span going from here to here, instead of computing it exactly, we say, hey, let's just draw a rectangle. So you can barely see it. I'm drawing it lightly. And so that rectangle is going to represent this total amount of shaded area. So you can see that that rectangle is not going to be exact. It's missing a bunch of area up here. Um, to give you another example, if I went from 2 to 5, I might use that rectangle. Draw it very lightly. And so that would be that area. And so you'll notice that it did not include this little region up here. So these rectangles are just approximations of the trapped area, and they're not perfect. This is why they call it an approximation method, left rectangular approximation method. Now the two triangles, or the two rectangles I just drew, would be LRAM rectangles because they are connected to the graph by their left edge. So if you look at this rectangle, the left edge hit the graph. In this rectangle, this left edge hit the graph. Um, I'm going to pause this and erase it and then draw a couple RAM rectangles. Okay, I've erased the LRAM rectangle. Now if I were going to do an RAM rectangle, I would make sure that I connect the rectangle on its right corner. So for the span between x equals 2 and x equals 5, I want to do a rectangle and I need to make sure that the right edge of the rectangle is the one that hits the graph. So when I do that, that causes the left edge to be higher than the graph, but that's okay. As long as the right edge of the rectangle hits the graph, I now have an RAM rectangle. And you'll notice that in this case, the RM rectangle counted too much area. The true area between the function and the x-axis is right there. And this rectangle gives us a little bit more. But once again, you now know that this is an approximation method. So keep in mind that you won't really write all these rectangles under a graph. Uh, that would take too much time, but your brain needs to imagine them, and maybe you will in the beginning as you're getting used to this. So before we start the actual problem, it would be presented to you something like this. 
it would say estimate this integral. And then in the instructions, they would usually say something like using a Riemann sum or using a rectangular approximation. Those are just vocabulary words to tell you to add up a bunch of rectangles. And as I've been alluding to, you could use LRAM, RAM, or MRAM. And MRAM is quite rare. Almost always they would ask you to use LRAM or RAM. All right, so let's get to one of these problems. I'm going to use this data table, this integral problem. And over here, I've got the graph. Let's see, I'm going to try to zoom out here. Hold on. OK, so I've rearranged things. I've given us the data table that we'd be working with, the graph that you may or may not take the time to do. And if we were going to estimate this using LRAM, I would just start sketching rectangles in my mind that look like this. Okay, drawn very lightly. Oops, it's windy out here. Um, and you'll notice that these rectangles are going to underestimate the real value, but that's okay. So I look at this very first rectangle, and I would go from 0 to 2 along the x-axis. So I would say, hey, that has a width of 2, and its height would be 1, thus I have 2 times 1. The next rectangle, I went from 2 to 5 along the x-axis, so it's width of 3. And the left edge goes up for 5 units, so thus I have a 3 times 5. Then a 1 times 6 and a 4 times 8. So once you start looking at these rectangles, you can start putting this down on paper, and you can get an estimated integral value. But I told you, you probably wouldn't be taking the time to do that graph. So how would you do all this without looking at the graph? Well, there's where it takes a little experience. You look up at the data table, and you look at it, and it says, I went from 0 to 2 along the x-axis. And during that span, the left data point had a y value of 1. So that's a distance of 2 times a height of 1, distance of 2 times a height of 1 then a distance of 3 times a height of 5, a distance of 1 times a height of 6, and a distance of 4 times a height of 8. So you'll get the pattern once you've done a few of these problems. So we get a 55 for that answer. If I would go with an RAM, I would end up doing different rectangles. Hold on one second. If I were asked to approximate using RAM, then I would have to make sure that my rectangles hit with their right endpoint. So I'm going to draw all of those rectangles, and I'm going to pause it while I do it. So now you see all of those right rectangular approximation rectangles drawn, and it's pretty clunky here. You see that we're counting way too much area, um, but that gets fixed later on in calculus, so don't worry about that. And so if I had to do this actual calculation, instead of drawing those, I might say I go two units along the x-axis, and the right edge of that rectangle would have had a height of 5. Oops, sorry. Three units times 6, one unit times 8, and four units times 12. So you notice that these two methods give you wildly different answers. Both of them are incorrect if you needed to be precise but they're good estimates. And so the last thing you want to know about these style problems in an AP environment is they're going to ask you to justify your over or under estimate. So I'm going to show you that. And these are just kind of like uh, statements that you just have to almost memorize, but I'm going to show you how you can bail yourself out if your memory fails you. If my function is an increasing function or positively sloped, so think of that like an increasing function going up like this. If I have an increasing function and I draw LRAM rectangles, they would look like that. Notice the left edge of every one of those rectangles is touching the function. Well, LRAM is going to underestimate an increasing function. 
and in the same scenario, an increasing function, if I did R RAM, I would be overestimating. So you can always do a little sketch or you can just rely upon your memory. And then the same thing holds true down here with the decreasing function. You can always easily reason that out for yourself. I'll just do one of these. If I had a decreasing function and I started doing, say, LRAM, connecting all my rectangles on the left edge, I would be overcounting the area between the function and the x-axis. Thus, LRAM overestimates a decreasing function. So we're almost done here. We've done an LRAM and an RM example. Those are by far and away the most common that you'll see on an AP test. You'll almost always be asked to state and justify whether it's an over or under estimate. Then the last thing you might want to take a look at is this thing called MRAM, or Midpoint Rectangular Approximation Method. And I'm going to very quickly go through one example of that. Okay, for this last part, I have a new function. I'm not going to bother graphing that, but remember, you can graph that if you'd like. And we're going to estimate the integral value using MRAM, uh, Midpoint Rectangular Approximation, in three intervals. So the way I would look at this is I would say, okay, if I need three intervals, I'm going to go from 0 to 4, from 4 to 8, and 8 to 12. And the AP would make sure that they write a question so you understand how your intervals would be stated. They'd probably say three even inter equal, equal intervals in this case. And so as I go from 0 to 4 along the x-axis, my rectangle would not be attached on the left height or the right height, my rectangle would be attached in the middle height. So I'll give you a picture of that here in a second, but I traveled four units and the midpoint y value was one, so four times one. The next rectangle I traveled, another four units from four to eight and the midpoint height was five, another four units and the midpoint height was 15. So if that's a little confusing to you, think of it this way. We had a graph going, and if I was going to do LRAM, it would look like that. If I was going to do RAM, it would look like that. But if I'm going to do an MRAM, then the midpoint of my rectangle is going to be what connects onto the graph. So in a case like that, perhaps I started at x equals 4 and I ended at x equals 8. And then this height, this would be at x equals 6, and it has a height of 5. So that would be the point 6 comma 5. It's right in the middle of that rectangle. By the way, for right now, don't worry about whether MRAM over or underestimates a value. Um, that's something we can talk about later. All right, this is your LRAM, RAM, MRAM, and I'm going to ask you probably in class to take a vow to never miss a point on this because it's pretty darn easy after you've practiced it a little bit.